Okay, a fish tank contains eight gold and eight red fish. Let P be the proportion of the red fish in the tank. A sample of three fish is taken from the tank without replacement. Okay, P is the proportion of the red fish in the tank. So, a fish tank contains eight gold and eight red. Can you tell me what is the P value, like the lowercase P value? What's that? P is the true population proportion. <clears throat> P is the proportion of the red fish, half, okay? 8 over 16, which is half, okay? 8 over 16, because you have 16 fish in the tank, and the 8 of them is red. So 8 on 16 is the actual proportion of the fish. Okay, the next thing I want to ask is, um, if I take red one red fish, like the first time I can I pick the first one, I can take a red fish, the uh, probability is half, right? I, I want to select one and it's a red one, it's half. So if I already take one red fish out, what's the probability of next time I can still get a red fish? If the first one already take a red one, okay, gone. What's the probability the second time I select one is still a red fish? Seven out of 15, because the probability will change. It's such a small population, only 16 in total. You take one out, the probability will change dramatically, okay, according to what you have taken out. And the probability you get a um, uh, gold fish will be eight on 15, okay, eight on 15. So the Popula the pro uh, probability of selecting different colors in different stage will change dramatically. It can't be a half all the time because one has throw out and then the total reduce one. So if you have a total 15, reduce one is a big change. Okay, but like, yeah, we'll talk about that later. So in this case, okay, a small population, we throw one out will change dramatically for the population. Just remember that. That's why we use hypergeometry distribution because the without replacement process will cause like a, a big change in the population for different stage. So let's have a look at the question A. A says, uh, what are the possible values of the sample proportion P hat? of red fish in the sample. So what's the what's the P hat could take? How many, what's the number of, uh, how many sample you take? How, three, okay, three. So what's the, how many red fish you could have? Zero, one, two, three. So what's the proportion then? If you take zero fish, what, zero red fish, what's the proportion for red fish? Zero. Yeah. <clears throat> so P hat can equals to zero. Well, that's zero out of three. If I select one out of three, I can have one third. If I have two, it's two thirds. And if I have one, that's just one. I guess three, that's one. So P hat, the proportion you achieve could be zero, a third, two thirds, and one. That's A. B. B is determine the probability that the proportion of the red fish in the sample is more than 0 0.25. Well, like, we're not talking about probability yet. Let's set up the table. Let's set up the table. The probability distribution table. to do is like x p hat what's the relationship between the x like the number of like fish red fish you want to select and uh, what's the probability of lower case that's the lower case p hat and have probability capital p hat equals to lower case p hat 
All right, so x can be 0, 1, 2, or 3. The proportion, therefore, can be um, 0, a third, two thirds, and 1. Okay, the important thing is the probability. So I'm selecting 3. So all the denominator should be 16, 3. Okay, 16, 3. 16, 3. And 16, 3. I'm selecting 3 from 16 things. Okay, that's a 3. Uh, 16 and 3. And the, then we're looking for okay, 0 redfish. And so 8, 0. And I'll have 8, 3. Because I need 3 gold one. I also have 1. So 8, 1. And 8, 2. And 8, 2. 8, 1. And this one is 8, 3. And 8, 0. Okay, that's the, well, you can see the middle two is the same. The last, like the first one, the last one is the same, right? Like eight, eight gold one, eight red one, and I want to say we, how many I want from each subgroup. Okay, how many I want from each subgroup. Well, if I have zero on this one, there must be three on the other. If I have one here, the other must be two. Two, one, and three, and zero. So that is the probability. Well, if we calculate that, Hmm, let's go a division sign here and then menu five five three okay called combination five one menu five three is the combination and then you have a uh, eight comma zero that is a one okay you know that is a one times menu five three so eight comma three Divide by menu 5, 3, 16, comma, 3. Okay, what we have is that. Press enter. That is 1 on 10. Okay, that is a 1 on 10. So this probability is 1 on 10. This probability must be 1 on 10 as well. That identical. If you can see that, it is identical. Then I can change that a little bit. I can change that to 1. I can change that to 2. So 2 fifths. Okay, 2 fifths must be the probability for those two. Okay, that 2 probability here. Okay, what I want for B is the probability, the proportion of the red fish in the sample is more than a quarter, 0.25. Okay, more than a quarter. Well, that's 0 0.333 already. Okay, so it's just probability. Okay, P hat greater than a quarter equals to 1 minus 1 on 10 is 9 on 10. Why is 9 on 10? Because like a third is greater than 2.5 already. So only the zero can't be the correct answer. So it's just 1 minus the 1 tenth. Okay, 1 minus the 1 tenth. So it's 9 on 10. Yep. Uppercase P greater than a quarter. Because it's the random rival greater than a quarter. If you use lowercase P, it's a fixed number already. Like it equals to something. That is like lowercase P is a number. It represents a number. But now what you're talking about is the something is greater than a quarter. What's the something? It's the random rival. That must be uppercase. Okay, for C, I want P hat equals to a third, given that P hat is greater than a quarter already. So what's the intersection between those two events? Equals to a third and greater than a quarter, what's the intersection? What's the intersection? Well, I find students have difficulty with that. Like if it's two inequality, you know that perfectly fine. But when there's an equal and a greater, like you just, well, what is the intersection? Have to think about what you can take for event A. Only a third. Okay, the elements you have in event A is only a third. What do you have in event B? Event B, what do you have is a third, two thirds, and one. What's the intersection? A third. Okay, you just have one element. That's the only thing you can intersect with other things. So the intersection must be P hat equals to a third. 
divide by probability p had greater than a quarter. That equals to two fifths. Well, I can use two fifths divide by greater than a quarter is nine on ten. So that's two fifths times ten on nine. That is two is a four on nine. And that's a four on nine. Any questions? Any question? Any question? No? Example four. Okay, a bag contains six blue ball and four red ball. Okay, six blue and four red. Find the probability the proportion of the ball is um I'm looking for blue balls. Okay, I'm looking for blue balls. Okay, blue. What's the P for blue? The lowercase p, not head. What's the lowercase p equals to? The true population means uh, uh, proportion. What is it? Point, point 0.6. Okay, not point 0.5, it's point 0.6. In total, there's 10. You have 6 blue. So 6 on 10 is point 0.6. I okay, guess point six for the true proportion, true p. That's the true p. Okay, um, determine the proportion in a sample size of four. Okay, sample size is four now. Sample size is four. It's more than a quarter. Well, let's have a think. If the sample size is four. So just set up the table. Let x, let x be the number of blue balls you could take. Okay, let x be the number of blue balls you could take, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, you can take one ball, two balls, three balls, four balls. And I can say, what's the pop P hat could be the B P hat can be zero, a quarter, a half, three quarters, and one. That's according to the x. Okay, so P hat equals to what? Equals to x over n. Okay, n is what? N is four in this case. Okay, the number of x you take and then over the total. Total is four. And then I have probability that P hat equals to lowercase P hat. So what I have for the denominator is uh, 10 select 4. Okay, 10 select 4 is the denominator. I have 10 things in total. I want to select 4 from that. It's 10, 4. So menu 5, 3, 10, 4. Okay, 210, 210. Well, now I want to select Zero. I want to select zero blue. Okay, zero blue then must be four red. Okay, zero blue must be four red. There's only one one way you can do it. If you can understand that, because you just have four red balls, you just you must take all of that and take none of the blue ones. So it is a six zero and four four case divided by two ten. So that is one. That is one. So it's just one on two ten. Two ten. Okay. Then you select one blue one. So six one over four three over two ten. Okay, that is a six. That is a four. Okay, that is a four. N n minus one equals to n. Okay, n n minus one equals to n. So twenty four. Uh, well, I'm not. I'm not going to simplify it first. I'll just leave the answer like that. That's 24 over 210. 
I'll select two. I want to select two from that. The six two four two over two ten. Uh, six comma two times four comma two divided by two ten. So three on seven. Three on seven. Well, it's ninety over two ten. And then you have three. You can you have the three. You can select three. So that's a six three four one over two ten. Four one is four. Okay, four one is four because n one equals to n. Okay, four one is just four. So what you should have is menu uh, control divide menu for three uh, six comma three. Times four divided by two ten. Eight over twenty one. Eight over twenty one. And then the last one you want to select four. So that's a six four four zero and over two ten. That is just one. Okay, that is just one. So six four two ten. One on fourteen. Well, let's simplify that. That's twenty four over two ten. That's just a four on thirty five. Okay, that's the answer to that. The add up should be one. Okay, the add up should be one. I, I want to keep like the nominal two forties because I want to add them, but like it's too hard to do that. Just, just simplify it, the add up should be 1, you can check it later. So that's the distribution for p hat, okay, that's the distribution for p hat. So let's say A, A says determine the probability that the blue ball in sample size of 4 is more than a quarter. So is the capital p hat is greater than a quarter, greater than a quarter, it's just 1 minus 1 on that minus 4 on 35. It must be a quarter, a half, three quarters, and one. Can't be a quarter. It's greater than a quarter. So can't take a quarter. So this answer is thirty-seven over forty-two. Okay, thirty-seven over forty-two. Thirty-seven over forty-two here. Okay, for B, determine the mean and standard deviation. Okay, that's become the important part. Determine the mean and standard deviation for p hat. What you can do to determine the standard deviation mean? We have learned that in chapter thirteen, and it's exactly the same here. It's a table. It's a table. You have the distribution for p hat. So, what's the method to find the mean? Okay, time them and add together. Okay, times them and add together. So that's the expected value for p hat. Okay, how do we write that? Is expect value for p hat. And then what you should write is zero times that will just disappear. A quote, nothing with the x, okay? Do not worry about the x. The x is just help you to find the p hat, what I write there. So a quarter times four times that, plus a half times three on seven, plus three quarters times eight on 21, plus one times one on 14. One times one on fourteen. So what I have is one on thirty-five plus three on fourteen 
plus that's a 2 so 6 over 21 plus 1 of 14 okay so One on thirty-five plus well, that's a four on fourteen, I think. Plus six on twenty-one. Uh, no, okay, six on twenty-one. Oh, that's just a what two on seven. Okay, two on seven. Well, it's pretty much the same. And you have three on five. Three on five. What do you see? What was three on five? What's the point? That's point six, right? Do you find point six anywhere before? True population sampling proportion. Okay, true proportion for the sample. Okay, true proportion for the for not for the sample for the blue fish. Okay. That's the true proportion. And the expected sample proportion will be the same as he had. Okay, that's always true. That's always true. Okay, so expected p hat will equals to p. Okay, expected p hat will equals to p. Well, we'll talk about the result later here. But just remember, the expected value for the sample proportion must be the true proportion. Well, let that make sense. Well, what I'm expecting, I'm expecting that to be the true one. Well, otherwise, why we talk about the sample proportion? The expected value must be the same as the true proportion. Uh, let's talk about the variance. Uh, well, if you talk about the variance, well, that's um, a quarter squared. It's very hard to do that. That's the p hat squared, and that's uh, 1 on 16 times 4 on 35 plus a quarter times 3 on 7 plus 3 quarters, which is 9 on 16 times 8 on 21 plus 1 times 1 14. All right. What's the numerator? 4 over 16 times 35 plus denominator 3 on 28 plus 72. 16 times 21 16 on 21 and 1 on 14 2 fifths okay 2 fifths of p hat the variance of p hat must be 2 of fifths minus 3 fifths squared and that is three fifths squared is 9 on 25 which is 1 on 25 So SD P hat is one of five. Okay. SD P hat is one of five. We expect is 0 0.6. Variance of that is one of twenty-five. Okay, that's how we calculate by using the table. Okay, that's how we calculate by using the table. so far like do you understand what's the uh, like the theory about talking about sample proportion okay let's talk about how many of the things it's basically talking about the distribution of x 
because the proportion is depends on x okay it depends on x how you can get x you are not thinking about the proportion at all when you talk about probability what do you think about this okay i need to achieve 4x and then three others okay what is that probability what is that probability so you actually think about x you're not thinking about the p hat the p hat is coming from the x okay p hat is coming from that which is pretty much the same as we talk about in probability all right um okay so what i want to do next is uh explaining a really important theory here because what you have learned here okay up to here it can be part one exam and i predict that will be on your part one exam as well this year because it's a new study design and the way they can ask in part one is only like that okay and like you won't give your like selecting five samples to take you forever to calculate well it would be three samples or at most four samples will be a reasonable number and then you need to know how to calculate the ncr thing by hand okay not by calculator ncr thing by hand okay so if you have problem go back to the not binomial distribution part and you have that formula n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial okay that is the calculation for that ncr thing uh, next thing is in part two exam the okay, next thing is in part two exam. So what the theory about this is, um, before we only talk about discrete point, let's say uh, I can take zero, I can take one, I can take two, and we think that after we select one, the probability will dramatically change for the second selection. But have us think about that. Well, if you already know there are 10 fish, six blue, four red, why you want to take a sample to calculate that? It's really meaningless, okay? If you already know the true proportion, why we talk about a sample proportion? It's just for math students, they can do some work and have a starting point, that's the purpose. But like in the real world, let's say we talk about the whole world uh, of mm, 17 teenagers about the proportion of females, okay? So 17 years old, and then talk about the female proportion. There will be a true proportion P, right? A true proportion P, like whatever it is, I don't know. But what I also know should be, um, think about that. I There are like say a million, just say a million, okay? A million of 17 years old, boys and girls. And the true proportion of female is 0.4. I take one female out, I select one female. Do you think this 0.4 will change dramatically for my next selection? The total is 10 million and I subtract by one. Okay, there's a, a 0.4 million and I'll subtract by one. That's what how many left for my female. It doesn't change that much. Okay, it's just almost no change. Well, constantly, maybe after 100 decimals, there's a change. But the number is still 0. 399999999 something okay so it's still equivalent to 4 okay it's still equivalent to 0.4 so when there's a really large population the next selection for females is not changing compared to the first one but almost not changing well it actually changed but it's almost no changing when you select the second one so we assume, it's, it's a reasonable assume, okay? It's not a really ridiculous one. It's a really reasonable assume, and it's a really good assume to say all the selections of females become a binomial distribution. Why, what's the difference between binomial and hypergeometry? Hypergeometry is without replacement, okay? I put the thing without replacement, and the probability dramatically change after the first selection. For binomial distribution, every single selection will be the same proportion okay among those populations i select one female the probability i select one is a female the proportion is 0.4 the uh, probability is 0.4 and i take that away i select a second one you still have the same chance to be a female as 0.4 so that is become a binomial distribution not hypergeometry anymore if the population is large enough and the binomial distribution is what we learn most for this course, okay, for this chapter. So what we learned before is called hypergeometry distribution. From this page onwards, it's called binomial, okay? From this, this page onwards, it's called a binomial.
So we assume is binomial. Well, it's not 100% accurate, but it's 99.99999% accurate to say that's a binomial distribution. Because population is too large, the small sample you take are not going to change the population structure, not going to change your true proportion for selection next. Um, then what we have is a really important formula here, okay, very important thing here. So what we have is p hat will be x divided by m. What is x? x is the number of females you select, for example, in my case. Divided by m, what is n? n is the sample, okay? n equals to the sample size. Okay, take 10, take 5, take 2, like that's your sample size. x is the number of um, interested, well, the number of events of interest. So what I'm interested in, that's the number of that thing gets selected. Okay, that's x. But the good thing is, what is x? x will called binomially distributed by n and p. What is n? n is the sample. How many selections you have done? How many experiments? How many trials you have done? Okay, that's the binomial theory. I select what I see whether you are a female or a male. And I record down yes or no. What's P? P is the true population proportion. Why use true population proportion? Because everyone got a same chance of being male or female. Let's say I just randomly grab one. That's a 0.4 of the chance that is a female, 0.6 of the chance that's a male. So my successful rate is actually a 0.4 because I'm interested in how many females I can get. Okay? So that is a binomial distribution. Okay, so my question is. What is expected x for binomial distribution? What's expected x? It's nothing about like nothing about chapter 17, it's binomial chapter. MP. What's variance of x? MP1 minus P. Okay, just know that first. And let's talk about the P hat, expected P hat, is the expected value of P hat. That will be the same as talk about the expected value for X over N. Okay, they are equivalent. <coughs> P hat is coming from X over N. Okay. N is a constant. N is a constant. What I can say next is 1 over N expected X. Remember, expected AX plus B equals to A expected X plus B. I can take the constant out, which is 1 over N, and leave the variable inside. Okay, drag the constant out, leave the variable inside. That's 1 over N expected X. What is expected X? What is expected X? NP is 1, time, 1 over N times NP. What is that? What's 1 over n times 1 mp? P. Okay, that's the same result we achieved. Expected of p hat is the true population p. Okay, it's the true population p. is P. Next thing. What's my variance of P hat? Well, let, before we talk about the variance of P hat, let's think about what the variance becomes uh, for AX plus B. What's that formula? Variance of AX plus B equals to what? A squared variance of X. Anything about B? No. Okay. That is a squared variance of x. Nothing about b. b gone. Okay, a constant variance of a constant is zero. Then let's have a think about the variance of p hat. Variance of p hat 
equivalent to talk about the variance of x over n. Well, p hat is x over n. Just remember, that's important, okay? p hat equals x over n, that's important. Okay, every question will need that thing. Okay, x over p hat. X, the p hat is over x over n. Okay, what that equals to? Variance of x over n. How I can simplify that by using that fact? If I want to take the n out, what I can have? 1 over n squared variance of x. Because 1 over n is the a, you need a squared. Okay, you need a squared. You can take the 1 over n squared out and variance of x. What is variance of x, everyone? What is variance of x? We just did it. N P one minus P over n squared. Okay, over n squared. And what I have is P one minus P over n. That's my variance of P hat. Okay, that's my variance of P hat. P one minus P over n. I just ask you, what is P? We just keep using P. What is P? True population proportion. Okay? P is true population proportion. Don't forget. Okay? You need to understand what you're trying to write now. Okay, then we have SD P hat equals to square root of P1 minus P over N. The expected value for sample proportion is very good. Okay, it's exactly the true variance, true p. But for the uh, mean, I mean, I mean, mean expected value is exactly the same as p. But the variance is not very nice. Okay, variance will be n uh, divided by n squared. The variance will be divided by n squared. Okay, I don't have enough time to go through next exercise. But you can think about next exercise. I don't think you could do it, but have a think about it and what you can do. I have a try, maybe you can do it. Okay, I have go through all the series. Okay, I have go through the series, nothing I need to teach. But you can have a try of it for the next five minutes. Okay.